Good afternoon, John. Good afternoon, Lisa. <laughs> I want to tell our viewers, actually, this is one of my biggest dream and honor and privilege to be sitting here next to you, sir, and uh, introducing Dr. John Butler, one of our esteemed hypnotherapists in this work, plus our CEO of our organization of ACHE and former president and everything else. Uh, Dr. Butler, would you please introduce yourself and just give us a brief history of your work? Yes, well, thank you, Lisa. I've been in the work, um, well, I'm thinking now 42 years, uh, no, 44 years professionally. I'm teaching for 34 years. Um, I've used hypnotherapy in, in a wide variety of applications. Uh, a lot of them in the mental health, quite a few in the medical applications, chronic illnesses, and also in surgeries uh, for uh, people coping with the very difficult surgeries may have. And sometimes there are where recovery is complicated and sometimes they have problems with medications. So if they can't have a, uh, an anesthetic, for example, we can use hypnosis to replace that, to use their own natural chemical anesthesia, which we all possess. Internally? Yes, we okay. all have our own opiates, serotonin, adrenaline, noradrenaline, and so on. Okay. Well, Dr. Butler, um, for our viewers, you've been practicing and you are practicing in UK. That's where your home base is. Yes, that's right. Okay. That's yes. And yet you travel everywhere. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been teaching in-person classes in different countries for many, many years. Correct. In the US, in different parts of Europe, in the Middle East, and so on. Perfect. When you started talking about uh, the clinical factor of uh, anesthesia, you yourself performed in UK uh, a surgery, a hernia surgery that was filmed. Yes, that's correct. Uh, I was offered a general anesthetic. That's what I was told I would need for this particular hernia. It was right. a, quite a severe one and um, an old injury that I had sustained. And, um, well, I know I don't need anesthetics, so I said, I won't need that, and I will just use hypnosis, which I did. And it happened to be filmed because I had an opportunity with a very good cameraman who was available, uh, who I knew through different connections, and it was just very much a, uh, a synchronicity thing. Okay. That he was available, and I said to him, let's do this for educational purposes. And, and, and that's excited people's imagination, that you can do this for yourself, as well as when you learn to be a hypnotist, you can learn to do that, to help other people. And for many people who don't need, or who don't have a problem with the anesthetics, but maybe they're very elderly, um, and the recovery from the anesthetic may be uh, a bit long, or other complications, uh, within the surgery, for example, post-operative infection. Right. If you're elderly and various factors can play into that, you can use hypnosis to speed up the healing and dramatically, we've seen from the data we have, dramatically cut down the risk of infections. Well, I do use uh, self-hypnosis for my root canals and I've done eight of them with absolutely no anesthesia or topical. And yet hernia, that means the surgeons, the hospital, everything, everyone had to be on board and approve of this, correct? Because yes. it is a real surgery. Of course, <laughs> it has to be, and we've done other surgeries, they're not all hernias, of course. Um, it, legally and medically, it has to be justified correct, and, and agreed by hospital management and the lawyers and so on, of course. And this is just for the viewers. You cannot learn how to do hypnosis and a week later go and do a surgery, please. Uh, I just wanted to make sure it takes years of practice for the self-hypnosis to do that kind of an induction, correct? Well, you've had other background in literally going into that mindset. Of course, of course. Well, the human mind is a very complex thing, Lisa. And the power was within there, in there, to be able to do that. For example, in an emergency setting, a person could get anesthesia at that level straight off. However, 
often they would not because of fear mm. and negative feelings from people about the whole thing, you know, from other people around them. Because, for example, if it's a street accident, people are often saying silly things, you know, right. and that could induce a state of fear. So there's no way then they're going to be able to use their anesthesia. Um, when we call it elective sur when it's elective surgery, a person is allowing, maybe they're getting ready for it for a few weeks, and that can allow time to worry and think about it in a negative way for some people. Uh, so you would need to take that into account. Right. Because those are negative suggestions in themselves. So training a person to do it, well, um, I usually do about four or five sessions maybe. I've done it in less, but so that makes sure that they're safe and we've tested it well. Now, um, if you want to do it to yourself, Yes, it usually will take a longer period of practice. That's my experience. I wish it wouldn't because I've taught it to many people, but yet very few will do it. You know, they won't spend the time often to dedicate to mastering the suggestions for numbness, anesthesia, and so on. But it's practically, shall we say, doable in an emergency like that. Right. What exactly, if you want to share with our viewers the difference between meditation and hypnosis and the power that we use with our subconscious mind, mm. and if we go just a little bit about that, because in the U United States, uh, utilizing hypnosis, especially in California, due to government and policies and uh, red tapes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as invited in a hospital setting. Yes. Well, uh, are you saying then if a person was learning meditation, they could use that as well? Because there's a great overlap between hypnosis and meditation. They're both tapping the inner mind. Right. Uh, usually it's for different purposes. Uh, in the sense that the hypnosis, we say, has an element of directiveness or intention. Uh, telling the subconscious, I want this to be numb, or I want this healing or that to happen. Meditation, although there's many forms, tends to be based around the idea of listening in and allowing the information that, that to, come. to come from within towards your mind into its other levels of mind, where hypnosis, we're directing the process. That's putting it simply, Correct. because there's a lot of overlap, of course. Okay. Now, practicing for over 40 years, and you have a school also, you teach in UK. Right. Uh, we have many uh, schools here in the United States. As a matter of fact, this weekend, we are at our conference, and uh, this entire thing started, our organization started with Gilboyne. Correct? That's right. Where it was in Glendale, that's where I attended and started. So our conference is, ACHE is mainly to bring people to for accreditation of the person, certifying them, and also certifying schools? Absolutely. It's a very important organization. It's a 501, and it exists to promote the profession mm -hmm. and the members' interests, the members who have learned hypnotherapy to a, to a certain level so that we know through the schools that ACHE approves that that person is uh, trained in a certain way to a certain level and the organization then certifies those people as members. It has maintained that work for over, well, we're now talking 44 years, right. since 1980, and um, Gil Boyne was the founding member of it and along with several other people, then they set up the first board, and it's done that, it's continued that work ever since. So it's a very, very important organization in the field of hypnotherapy. Its legacy is history, and the work it continues to do to this day. And it is always about standards, which is about protecting the public in a genuine way, mm. and the, the, the profession itself, that the people who train with schools in the ACHE, know that they are getting a solid training. Uh, the conference is one of the times that people can meet up in person, right. and that's a wonderful event. 
It's a wonderful education event, it is. As, long, as well as networking and renewing friendships and making new friends. The opportunity to learn from people who are actually working in the field, right. who do this work day in, day out, that's, that's invaluable. It is because even as hypnotherapists, when we sit in a room uh, that it's a workshop and it's a whole new uh, speaker, yeah. no matter how much we know, it's always fantastic to be refreshed and relearn probably a new technique, a new way of doing that we either get uh, so ingrained in our work or and having a new way of doing it, it's like refreshing. Well, absolutely. Each practitioner in hypnotherapy is a very individual person in the sense that they've learned about the mind mm. and you're hearing another mind's interpretation of this work. Their neurosynaptic uh, connections that they've acquired learning and practicing over the years, you're, you're tapping into that. Right. It gives you new perspectives, new angles. And even it's, it's like reading the very best books. If you read it a few different times, each time you visit the book, you're seeing it differently. You're reading with a different brain. And so this is a wonderful opportunity, I believe, to come to a conference like this and make the most of what's on offer. And we're very careful about the topics and people we mm. select to speak. Wonderful. Yeah. Dr. Butler, one of our viewers might turn around and say, why hypnotherapy versus cognitive therapy? Mm -hmm. I would love for you to shed a light on that. Well, <laughs> hypnotherapy <laughs> specializes in directly communicating with the subconscious mind. We can do it indirectly as well, but as a hypnotherapist, you must learn how to use it directly to activate its power and guide that power towards specific ends. Now, cognitive therapy, the word cognition, is very broadly applied in psychology. Uh, going back to cognitive psychology in the 60s and even earlier, it has come to mean the kind of intellectual aspects of therapy more than the subconscious, which is what we're primarily interested in. Now, a good hypnotherapist will use elements of cognition. You can't avoid it anyway. And they will have learned about how you use thoughts to target certain feelings, change certain feelings, generate certain feelings, but they won't be relying on that only. Mm -hmm. They're talking directly to the subconscious mind. Well, like when I'm studying about the subconscious for surgery, you must activate it so that you can release those neurochemicals that will be able to modulate pain. Now, intellectually telling your brain, I won't have pain, is not enough. Right. Because the subconscious may be saying, oh yes, you will. And so, rather than trying to work to the subconscious indirectly through the cognitive Correct. faculties, which can become very intellectual in some people's cases, you go directly to the subconscious. And so, there is an overlap, of course, but a hypnotherapist is a subconscious specialist, to put it simply. Perfect. As you see, there is the clinical version of, of being a hypnotherapist. And of course, you may have viewed some stage hypnosis, which you believe there is uh, the stage performance and the entertainment aspect of it. Although we can all do that, our, your specialty and most of the therapists in here, we do the clinical aspect of it, correct? Well, of course. Yeah. Because our interest is in <clears throat> helping people with their emotional <clears throat> and physical problems, where in which the, the physical problems in which the mind has an important role, and that are triggering the illness in the first instance or being an exacerbatory factor. Because illness, of course, can come from organic sources and um, of organic nature come from viruses, infections, and accidents, and so on. And even then, our body's natural healing mechanisms must cope with that, and that's subconsciously regulated. So you see the great power of hypnosis to activate the healing system, when you know how to use the subconscious, to activate the healing systems to help with those physical problems. Mm. And so we can, we can do great work, really, uh, in so many ways with hypnotherapy as a modality. It is a very deep modality 
It embraces a wide range of philosophical approaches and it is the foundation of psychotherapy. It's not a technique you just add on to psychotherapy. Aha, did you hear that? It is the foundation of psychotherapy. Yes, historically, the work of Mesmer, who drew on other people's right. work from the Middle Ages times, in fact, going back to the philosophy of the magnetic energy, magnetic fluid, mm -hmm. and so on, which is probably like a life energy, or however they conceptualize it. And in Mesmer's case, he thought of it very much like electrical energy. But he also understood about the power of suggestion. Anyway, the dramatic results that Mesmer was getting by triggering people's minds uh, through the emotional catharsis and crisis, as he called it. Right. But that was taken up by people who said, well, we don't have to think about it as a magnetic energy or a, the animal fluid, you know, it's this uh, animal magnetism, as it's called. Animals meaning the soul. So. It doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean an animal. But, um, that people then said, well, we're going to get away from that theory, but we'll keep the rest of it, the imagination, the suggestion. And that led to modern hypnotherapy over time. And of course, one branch of that was Freudian, because Freud studied with Charcot, who was a mesmerist, a very famous anatomist, one of the most famous neuroanatomists right. of all time. And um, so that's how it came about. And Freud thought hypnosis was a bit unreliable, and he had other problems with it for a while. Later on, he admitted he we, he needed to be using it. Mm. After about 30 years, he came back <laughs> to his own members, his own followers, and said, you need to use hypnosis rather than rely on free association and dreams only. Got but it. it never took off within psychoanalysis. Although afterwards, maybe 20, 30 years later, some of them, some of the psychoanalysts, psychiatrists using his methods, drifted back into using hypnosis. And nowadays, many, many people are using hypnosis or aspects of hypnosis. They don't always call it call hypnosis. Call it that. Yeah. So they call it visualization, guided visualization. Yes. Right. But subconscious, because when you're working with the mind, subconsciously you're working with the way it affects the conscious mind, how it affects the body. It's at the foundation of your being where you're really dealing with it. And so therefore it embraces all philosophy, all uh, forms of psychology that pertain to the individual and their health and actions and so on. So by definition, it has to be very broad based. Correct. That's why you can't say there's only one kind of hypnotherapy. We call it cognitive hypnotherapy or cognitive behavioral hypnotherapy. No, you can't restrict it that alone. Is that CBT? Yes. Right. So you could say I'm a hypnotherapist who uses a lot of CBT. Well, that's true, but you can't restrict yourself only to it. Otherwise, you're really not a hypnotherapist. Now, you can be a CBT therapist who uses some hypnosis to help your work, but you really are a CBT therapist Correct. primarily. Right. Now, Dr. Butler, you work with military. You work with huge uh, five, uh, Fortune 500 corporations and everything. Why would a company bring you on uh, to help or the military bring you on if it is not just one-on-one, -on -one, and yet it is a one-on-one, -on -one, but a corporation bringing a hypnotherapist for their management or staff? Sure. Well, they hear of my work and they know me from having given talks before. Uh, it's a long story how I got started in that. It's often individuals who, <laughs> sent, who were sent to me, very often men in those days and their wives, who maybe were in classes I taught, said, he needs to see you. Um, and I said, well, it's up to him to come. But anyway, he would come and get benefits. He'd say, can we do this for our executives? And we, can we not use the word hypnosis? And I said, of course, because if they're misunderstanding it anyway, mm. their objection to it is primarily on the base of misunderstanding. It's primarily around this idea you're taking over my mind and you're influencing Correct. me. And that's a bit scary. So they were just reiterating old Hollywood tropes, old misunderstandings from the, the old films. Correct. Like Svengali and so on. So um, I would say, yes, we'll work on it. We'll call it something else. It might be positive psychology or one form or another. And uh, so that's how I got started in doing that. And they have, other, they have many reasons to bring you in. Stress management, performance enhancement, helping people learn better. In some of the huge firms I've worked with for accountancy. People are going through tough exams. Right. And we're working to help with their study methods. Focus memory, attention. Memory, focus, attention, concentration, 
performing under stress, you know, dealing with, um, you know, situations where anxiety is going to come into play for a lot of people. So those are just some of the ways we may be using them. And, and of course, some of these people, they are, we need to improve their uh, management methods, well, their interpersonal skills, really. They're good managers in the sense Actually, self-esteem and self-confidence plays a lot, and yeah, also course. speaking abilities. Yes. Becoming a better speaker, that it's also yes. becoming confident enough to speak. Absolutely. Those are some of the things right. that they really want help with. And um, I've dealt, dealt with that over the years, many, many times. Beautiful. And with the military and everything, it would be more of the stress management, anxiety, yeah. panic, and... That's the, next the fears area. and phobias that also go in there. Oh, oh, of course. Right. People with PTSD. Right. Often I've worked with soldiers who have been through that and have problems. So they have flashbacks, dissociation, states of mind that are very like multiple personalities or dissociative identity disorder. They may have depression and other factors as well, of course. Now, we help them with all of that. Mm -hmm. Hypnotherapy is a marvelous method to help people master that prob those problems that are left over from combat and so on. Yes. And then helping people um, in different areas of military learning. I've worked with you know, people who are high level in the Marines right. and people like that, and they have to do tough training, mentally and physically. And so managing stress and coping with uh, real, really difficult learning objectives that they have to do, to have to master. So, yeah, these are just some of the military applications. Right. I believe most of the first responders from ER to police, fire, anyone that deals with like an immediate trauma, they're on call, they're like the 911s, yes. um, they go through and see a lot. And it, it does right. affect mm -hmm. every nerve and every, every essence of who they are. Most certainly. Right. I've worked with people who have been through some horrible... Uh, atrocities. Uh, this is from among the public now. You know, they may have oh, been, okay. They may have had been there in the valley bombing and when, when friends of theirs were blown to pieces or in the major ro ra rail accidents. I've dealt with that in Britain, the London bombings. I've dealt with people from that and from many, many, many horrible situations. Right. And what they see and experience is a very deep impression that changes their personality often in ways that are very, very, very problematic. And so long-term depression is common, long-term mm. anxiety. Uh, so we work on that. And again, I have to say, hypnotherapy is a wonderful method when it's done properly. Correct. And we're talking about real traumas, not, not labeling everything a trauma that you don't like in your life. You know, I mean, not that well, there's a tendency for some people to overuse the word, overextend the term. Right, there's trauma and there's something traumatic. There is indeed. <laughs> and some of the things, some of the things you come across, or hear reported at least, yes. are truly horrendous. Yeah. And helping people assimilate that, uh, integrate it enough in their minds so they can move forward in life without being damaged or destroyed by it even. That's such wonderful work with hypnotherapy. Exactly. And I want to make this lighter. Yeah. Dr. Butler. <laughs> I'm very happy with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, this was amazing. And um, I've known you for over 20 years yeah. uh, in many different aspects. So when I asked uh, doc Dr. Butler, I said, what do you do for fun? He says, I work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was being a little facetious. <laughs> well, my work is a passion. Yes. It's where I get so much satisfaction. It's a high. It's a natural high. And but I don't have to go and do golf to relax and get a high there. I mean, it's there. I love good music. Mm. Um, Classical. There, yes, yes. I I'm, there. I like quite a few different genres of music. I can listen to any good music. There's okay. some wonderful folk music, uh, which is inspirational and some of the best classical music as well. Um, certain kinds of jazz music and and uh, in all the genres of music out there, there's good work. Uh, and then there's, of course, there's really throwaway music. As I call it. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Nowadays, we have a lot of that too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Good. 
Well, I want to say thank you very much, not only for spearheading our organization after our founder, but making our work, our profession, a true career and a profession. And I know there are many schools, so viewers, watch out. Give me a call and uh, let us be in contact because you never know, there might be another one happening in our hometown, Glendale, by the next year. And thank you for all the good work and your leadership, sir. Thank well, you, viewers. <laughs> and I hope this was beneficial for you. If you have any questions, by all means, you can always find Dr. Butler because I will have his biography uh, as part of this view on our YouTube channel. And uh, until then, goodbye. God bless. Thank you and goodbye. Mm -hmm.